It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Woo baby. How are you? Woo baby. Boy howdy. How are you Yippee doing? Yippee ki yay, my friends. My friends. Melon Farmers. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Hello. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, I have my 3D printer running. Yes. Hopefully that doesn't make too much noise. I'm churning out these uh, uh, Game Boy cartridges. I I went a, I got a little too ambitious. I, I gave it. He wanted yeah. one, so I gave him one. So it's gonna, this one. This guy right here. Hello. So, hey. Hi. Hey. Look. I'm talking, so the camera's got to focus on me. Focus on me, camera, so I can show off the thing. It's the thing. It or this broken. thing. Okay. It might All just right. be broken. Okay. <laughs> so I gave you. So I, this has gone through many iterations. Yes. It's just a file I pulled off the internet. Right. That's really all it is. And you put the logo on. And I put the logo that I printed that I yeah. that I made in Photoshop. Uh, th this I made a while ago for a different video, the the, yeah. the, the label. But but the I I thought it, I wanted to give away something. I'm going to too many games this weekend. We're gonna be doing a signing. Hey, camera work. Uh, gonna be doing a signing. I decided I wanted to give something away during the signing, so I'm gonna give these away. Little dust covers for yes. either your Game Boy or your analog pocket. Uh, so if you come to my signing on Friday at seven, first couple of people are gonna get one of these. Seven of them will have the trailer for Morbius. Will you be one of the lucky ones? Three of them will have a bootleg of Pokemon Blue because I couldn't put the Morbius trailer on them for some reason. <laughs> so I had a bunch of bootleg yeah. uh, uh, Pokemon games because they were like five bucks on AliExpress and I wanted yeah. it for a bit. And you can just take those cartridges and reflash them. Three of them, it just didn't work for some reason. Right. So you're getting Pokemon. Anyway, uh... This is just one piece right here. Yeah. Uh, I've since tweaked it so that it's two pieces. Here, you hold this. Yeah. It's two pieces, just like the an actual Game Boy cartridges, yeah. so that I can put a chip in it. I don't know if I'm actually going to be putting a chip in it because uh, I I don't. It takes so long to print these. Well, yeah. It's four and a half hours to print two. Okay. I figured out how to do six at a time. Okay. But it's going to be one piece like that, so you can't put anything in it. And it would take 10 hours. Jesus Christ. And I leave on Thursday. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But, yeah, here, here's... But it has to be two pieces in order to fit the circuit board in, right? That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. like, a bunch of them are just going to be dust... Most of them are going to be dust covers. Right. But uh, I also just have the blue Pokemon what cases yeah. i'm just gonna put a label on those because this is just not gonna <laughs> it's just i'm just not gonna have enough time to print enough right. but yeah this is the one with uh this is the one that that's in two pieces yes now another weird thing is that this is per this perfectly fits a bootleg circuit board but so if you get one of these you probably can't put a game boy you could probably only put a bootleg cartridge well, in how different is a bootleg board from a legitimate board it's like I mean, the ones that I have are like half the size. They they only go up to like here. The bootlegs. The bootlegs. Okay. Yeah. And, and and there's a little like notch here to hold it. Uh huh. Uh, and I don't think that notch is gonna work for a regular, for a regular right. old guy. Uh, but yeah. So, I don't know why I'm talking about this so much. If you go to too many games, you might get one, and you might not. Most people probably aren't gonna get one. Yep. Most people watching this probably aren't gonna get one. What you could do is you could beat up somebody who got it. True. And just. <laughs> Take theirs. Yeah. Violence. Yeah. We're encouraging violence in too many games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we got things to talk about today. Yes. Uh, big news happened today. I was not expecting it at all when I woke up this morning. Uh, there's a Nintendo Direct happening tomorrow. Yeah. So, once again, Nintendo don't like us. No. But there will be a Nintendo podcast all about the Nintendo Direct on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, if you're watching this and you're upset we're not talking about the Nintendo Direct, I will talk all about it on Thursday on a different YouTube channel. Uh, you just also have to hear wood. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it when I woke up today for them to announce it for tomorrow. But I thought maybe sometime soon there'd be a Nintendo Direct because, uh, you know. Yeah. It's freaking uh, about June. that time. Yeah. July's yeah. almost here. The Pikmin's coming out. And yeah. when is Pik like when is Pikmin coming out? Do they have like a date for that? They do have a date for that. Yeah, because if it's like in the fall, then they don't really have like their big winter Christmas 
release unless they expect Pikmin to be that July twenty first. Oh, so they don't have anything else besides that. Exactly. So like they have to start like teasing what they're coming out with in the winter. Yeah, the late fall and winter. So I suspect there's gonna be barely anything in this. It's gonna be a lot of Pikmin. Yeah, at least ten minutes of Pikmin, mm-hmm. which is one fourth of the whole. Direction. Yes. Uh, I think there'll be one interesting announcement. There's a rumor that there will be a 2D Mario game. Okay. Which I should be excited for. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm keeping my expectations bare minimum. Because, like, if you think about it, what are they going to announce? New Super Mario Brothers again? Like, yeah. I love 2D Mario. Well, it's been a long like, time since we got into, like, the next official new Super Mario Brothers. Because the last one was Super Mario Brothers U. Yeah, and, and that, I... That came to Switch. And I honestly would not be very excited for that. No. Like, I, like I'm... Uh, like I like new Super Mario Brothers games, but right. I've I've had my fill. You know that they have. It has to be very different for me to get like super stoked about yeah. it. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, there's also rumors that there's going to be a Super Nintendo remake. What do you mean, Super Nintendo remake? Either a remake or a remaster. I think a remaster. Of I think what? remaster is the word. Of the Super Nintendo itself? No. <laughs> a game from the Super Nintendo that's being remastered. Okay. I think the rumors are Chrono Trigger. Okay. But uh, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be Mario RPG. Could be. That's a big one. We haven't seen that on Switch yet. That's a big one. Yeah. Uh, but again, I don't think it's going to be very exciting, this this Nintendo Direct, because... Uh, Dumbass. You spilled all of yourself? Yep, spilled all over myself. I don't think it's going to be very exciting. Be- yeah, I, I don't use the yeah. top when I drink out of that. I don't think it's going to be very exciting, because I think that Nintendo's holding a lot of stuff for next console. Yeah. yeah. And we have... Something to talk about with that, too. We do. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. We're not going to be able to talk about the Direct. That's our predictions, I guess. Do you have any predictions for what it could be? <sighs> not really. I tend... Or, or any hopes that you want to see. So, pe- I mean, when people maybe... see it and then listen to this, they could be like, oh, my God, <sighs> not, Will was Not right. to be that... I mean, Will's always right. <laughs> not to be that guy, but how long has it been since um, the Metroid Prime 4 video where he's like, I'm sorry, we have to delay it? something along those lines even if it's just a new like logo <laughs> yeah for the game just to you know to show people that yes they are working on it and we do have something to show that's for the it. only other thing we know that they have coming yeah but we don't know when yeah um i mean i mean i would like to see a new 2d mario game that isn't um new super mario brothers u i yeah. think t- enough time has passed for them to uh come out with a new 2d mario game and it'd be not fresh but like different enough in people's eyes like they're not burnt out on it like they were last time yeah uh yeah other than that i don't know i like the idea of uh this like super mario flashback that you you might have seen i've seen this yeah what button do i hit this button is it this button that is that button uh this game looks sick uh this was made a long time ago but like this yeah, type of new take on a uh, 2D Mario style yeah. is something that I That want. would be cool. Like something a little more cartoony. Yeah. Uh I it doesn't need to be 3D like rendered. The 3D models. Yeah. yeah. Like I this, mean this... even if they did something like the Rayman games where it's like you know a full on cel shaded cartoon. Oh yeah. Like that would be awesome. That would be a completely different style for yeah. Mario cuz right now his he's 3D. Yeah. Mario is just 3D mm-hmm. now. So yeah, so I, just some sort of. I want to change in style. Yeah, um, but that's it. That's all we got for a for a direct going on. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's it. I I also selfishly want uh something with N sixty four going on because I have an N sixty four video coming out on uh, Thursday. Okay, so I want maybe a give me a, throw me a game. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what else do we have? Oh, there's a new game coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Yes, uh, Fire Emblem. Not that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first Fire Emblem game to be released outside of Japan, Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance, will be added to Switch Online's expansion pack uh, next week, June 23rd. So that's in three days, everybody. Get ready. Uh, also known as Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade, this 2003 game was a, uh, actually the seventh entry in the tactical role-playing series. Nintendo decided to try localizing it for an international release after having great success bringing developer Intelligence Systems' other strategy series to a global audience with 2001's Advanced Wars. 
The Blazing Blade was the debut of the popular character Lin, who has appeared in the latest Fire Emblem Engage as the Emblem of Blazing. That sounds like weed references. Uh, <laughs> all Like all Fire Emblem games prior to 2012's Fire Emblem Awakening, it features character Permadeath, uh, which can't be disabled as the press release puts it. In this Fire Emblem game, if your soldier meets their end, they're gone forever. I mean, good. That's the way the game was intended to be played. So. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this this was funny because when it came out, um, Smash Brothers Melee had came come out and Roy and Marth were in it, but Fire Emblem hadn't come to North America by that point. So everyone was just like, "Who the fuck are these sword guys?" <laughs> and that's why it came here, right? I think that yeah, I think so. That's because, why they like they localized. It. Well, we put Fire Emblem in, in this game. Let's just. Bring a Fire Emblem game over here and see how it does. And people love their Fire Emblem. That's enough to get me interested in a game. Yeah. Like, that's not a bad marketing strategy. I'm already playing Melee. Yeah. Throw in a character make me go, who the hell's that? Yeah. Then I'll be interested in yeah, the it, game. Yeah, they did from. the same thing with Lucas. Yeah. And, you know, they brought Mother 3 over to North America. Oh, oh, that's a lie. Yes, I am lying. <laughs> you are I am lying. lying to you. I am playing a trick. <laughs> um... While we're here, yes, let's thank some people. A lot of people just subscribed and shit, and it didn't update. What the fuck? You're 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 right here. <laughs> I I could see you with my eyeballs. Am I? No, yeah. Okay, there you are. Hello, gamers. Charisma next to the thirty eight months. It's a me spaghettio. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is that racist? That's I'll, racist. I'll ask. Gonna, I'll ask mom tomorrow. I'm gonna say that's. I'll ask racist. mom tomorrow when I see. Her. Uh. I, I I was trying to explain to Hannah what a mono goat was. Yeah. Is it accurate to say that's an Italian enchilada? Is you're not far off the mark or lasagna yeah. enchilada really? It, it it's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. It's lasagna but in a roll. In a roll, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's like yeah. yeah. You know. Anyway, uh Lord Zero, thanks for the 8 months. Blue Dusk, thanks for the 2 months. Love the SM64 in the background. Thanks, dude. Uh, I was filming something, and I thought it looked <laughs> nice, so I left it. Uh, Joe Changs, thanks for the Prime, and Wicked Spooky, thanks for the 14 months. Yo, guys, I hope you're both doing amazeballs. <laughs> I like that every month it's the same message from him, and it's always amazeballs. <laughs> well, you know, when you got something, you stick with it. You know? I am definitely doing amazeballs uh jazim thanks for the 10 months let's go wolf thumbs up oh that's an emote we have i forget we have emotes i see the emote uh i, I thought for a second you were actually flipping me off no it's an emote. Up. yeah now it's i see that thumbs but like up. that would be a good trick like you label it wolf thumbs up but it's actually you flipping the bird ah yeah uh fat will in the chat hey so in the chat <laughs> Fat Will in the chat. It's a different guy than what's but here. But he's, he's my guy. <laughs> he says... Because I need to lose weight. Lasagna is racist? If you make it. If you make, make it. it and you... It sounds like you just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to talking about Sony. Yes. Uh, Sony did a thing. Uh, uh, this is news to me. This is something I was kind of, I don't want to, would you call it predicting? It's just seemed very obvious that it, that it, it's something they have to do it's if one they're the, making a whole console around streaming. It's one of those things that like seems logical. Mm -hmm. So you would assume like they announced X, so that must mean Y is coming. Yeah. But Sony has been one of those companies where they announced X, you're expecting Y, but they do D. Yeah, yeah. They, so. they 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 announce something. You think it's gonna be one way, and then they make it just hard for you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so what are they doing? I'll read this article from Engadget, and while you do that, I'm gonna kill that mosquito. Let's do go. it. Uh, if Sony is going to enable PS5 game streaming on devices like its Project Q handheld, it needs to offer that streaming in the first place. Thankfully, that's on the horizon. The company is now testing streaming of PlayStation 5 games for PlayStation Plus premium subscribers, including PS Plus game catalog titles and supported digital PS5 titles that players own. You'll have to use your PS5 system, but this will save you the trouble of downloading games and chewing up valuable SSD space. 
you have to use your PS5, that's so annoying. Uh, the test is in the early stages. The a launch window and other details will be available when we're ready, Sony says. Uh, PS5 Premium normally costs about $15 per month and already allows cloud gaming for PS3, PS4, and classic, in quotes, titles. Uh, you can also stream those titles to a PC. PS5 support would make the tier considerably more appealing, especially as Sony expands access beyond the PS5 itself. Project Q uh, has an 8-inch display with DualSense equivalent controls and currently is only confirmed to work with remote play directly from a PS5 that you own. This doesn't mean uh, first-party games will be available to stream on launch day, as they are sometimes with Microsoft's Game Pass. Subscriptions head Nick McGuire tells GameIndustry.biz that in-house titles will still be released outside uh, outside the service first. The existing approach of moving games to premium a year or more later is working, in quotes, according to McGuire. In other words, the company wants to eke out as many purchases as it can. The mention of digital titles you own does suggest some games may be available to stream on day one, provided you're willing to buy them outright. That still provides access to a significant library. As of next week, uh, PlayStation Plus uh, is adding Far Cry 6, Inscription, Rogue Legacy 2, and Solstice to the PS5 section of the game's catalog. While those aren't necessarily must-play titles, premium streaming could make it relatively painless to check them out. I just realized your camera is shaking because... Uh... <laughs> The 3D printer is, is, is printing, <laughs> so it's shaking your camera. <laughs> um, so I'm a, I'm understandably confused because it's Sony and they yeah. can't just make things easy for us. Um, it's gonna be so it they're testing it. Yes. Can I use it right now? No. They're testing it internally. Yes. So I pay fifteen dollars a month for the PlayStation Plus Premium, which is their maximum tier. Right. 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 Can I? Uh, so they said that it might not be day one streaming for games for 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 first party games. Correct. So let's say they announce that. Let's say God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Let's say that's part of the streaming service. Okay. Do I have to buy God of War Ragnarok and also pay fifteen dollars a month? Yes, that's what it sounds like. It's. It sounds like it's going to be included in your premium subscription. That is not a good deal. No. No, it's going to be included in the premium subscription, but also I need to purchase the game. Correct. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I mean, the idea of... And can I buy it physically and still play it? Probably not. Because, and this isn't this isn't necessarily a Sony thing. It's also a thing on, like, Xbox, too. You know, you buy the game physically... And your account acts like you don't technically own the game sometimes. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go into the Microsoft, you know, the Microsoft store on my Xbox and a game I physically own. If it's installed on the hard drive, it'll say available. Yeah. Meaning I play it, but I have to put the disc in. If I don't have the game installed on the hard drive, it'll just assume I don't own it. The beauty of uh, Game Pass is that. I don't have to do anything. Everything's yeah. just there. I pay the fifteen dollars a month or whatever it is, and I could just do whatever I want right. on any device I want. I could just, I could just do it, and yeah. and and we're good. This, it's like I gotta think every yeah. time I want to play something. There's like multiple steps, and the fact that they lock something like this off behind the highest tier, yeah, of PlayStation Plus, you know, really doesn't seem like a good deal for the consumer, like on our end. Yeah, you know, like. They might think it's easy, and in like in a sense, it is. It's a feature, yeah. So they they're like, oh, we're giving them more features, right? It's, it's but just it's, a, it's a line on the back of the box. It's and like you know what they say, like the more things on the back of the box, the more appealing it looks. But yeah. it's not, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the better thing. I think this is absolutely necessary, especially because they're making a whole piece of hardware yeah. around streaming, and that. The Project Q wouldn't make any sense unless they had PlayStation Plus streaming on the device also. Right. So you don't need a PlayStation 5. Or better yet, you don't need to connect to the PS5 that you have at home. Right. Uh, because it it's, it's easier to have problems with home internet, no matter how good your home internet is. Yeah. You got to deal with your ISP and shit. And a server is just always going to be better yeah. at at 
you know, wherever it is. Uh, I think remote play on a PlayStation 5 is a pretty terrible experience. I have said it before. I made a whole video about it. Uh, some Most people didn't watch to the end of the video where I said that uh, PlayStation Plus streaming from a server is actually great. It works really well. Right. It is as good as Game Pass streaming, at least in terms of quality. Uh, it is a little annoying and confusing. But... Uh, you can use alternative controllers and stuff. Right. So I was able to do that with my uh, Asus Ally, uh, but it only works on PC. Right. So something like that needs to come to Android. Yeah. Or Sony's going to Sony, and they're going to lock it behind something like a Project Q. So to back up a minute, so the way they're making it sound like it works, so they said they're adding Far Cry 6 to the game's catalog. Let's, let's use that as an example. As it stands right now, Far Cry 6, you download that to your PlayStation and you play it on your PlayStation. If you want to play in any other way, you have to remote play it either to your phone or to your computer. Under, under this new cloud streaming service, you don't have to download the game. You just hit a button and you instantly start playing it on the PlayStation 5. But only on the PlayStation 5. Right. I think the appeal of cloud gaming, especially how Microsoft has sold it with Game Pass, is that, yeah, you could do it on your home console, but then when you're done, you could pick it up on your PC, yeah. or you could pick it up on your phone, and you can take it out with you. I don't think Sony realizes, at least not yet, that cloud gaming doesn't necessarily mean, like, by having cloud gaming limited to the console, that uh, takes away the actual appeal of cloud gaming, which is taking your game everywhere without actually taking your game anywhere. Yeah. You know? I think there might be something to maybe you get a brand new game, right? Mm -hmm. You put the, di like, like you, you go to Target and you come home and you put the disc in. Or you hit download on the PlayStation 5. And, yeah. Uh, while it's either downloading all it or installing or getting an update or whatever... The PlayStation can go, hey, while this installs, do you want to stream it? Yeah. And then it gives you like a little like a little download bar or whatever. But you can just get right in the game via streaming. And then when the game's done downloading or installing or whatever, you'll yeah. get a notification. Hey, do you want to switch over to uh, close the game and open it again? And you're, you'll play it locally. Well, right, that could be really cool. Well, right now, even on PlayStation 4, some games have, you know, as you're installing the game, once it gets to a certain point, it'll yeah. ask you, do you want us to start playing now? And you'll get, you're not going to get the whole game, but you'll get the game up to a certain point. But imagine just playing immediately. Right. And like for most people, what is it like waiting 20 minutes for the game to either download or for it to install or whatever? Yeah. But for a lot of people, their internet might only be good enough to do something like streaming because you don't yeah. need that great. You just need a consistent connection to do game streaming. You don't need a really fast connection mm -hmm. and you need a pretty decently fast connection to download a 100 gigabyte game, you yeah. know? So there is something there to be able to just uh, immediately start streaming something and then, you know, play it locally later. But yeah, Sony locking this behind PlayStation 5 functionality is dumb because that's like the last place I want to stream my game. Yeah, exactly. Like the whole appeal of, like I said, the whole appeal of cloud streaming is playing the game on whatever device you have, not necessarily your PlayStation 5. That could be your home base, but you know, I'm, gonna, I'm going away next week. Sorry, I'm not going to be here. But like <laughs> if I wanted to stream a PlayStation 5 game, I would have to log my entire PlayStation 5. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Or, or, or you, you remote play to your, to your home. You got to log a, a Wi-Fi hotspot. Around. But that's the thing. I have to leave my PlayStation on yep. in order to remote play. And no guarantees it'll stay that exactly. way. Exactly. Like what happened to me when I went to Vegas. Exactly. It just fucking turned itself off. Exactly. And I would have known if there was a power outage. The PS5 just turned itself off. Yeah. So... Like it, like for in order for this to work to succeed, it has to be beyond the PlayStation Five and the Project Q nonsense. They have yeah. to open it up to, you know, every device that can run it. So PC and uh, mobile devices. S Sony should be at the point now where they realize that most people that it doesn't matter where they play the game as long as they're playing the game. Yeah. Like 
that's why they're putting games on PC now. Right. Because they're like, you know what? Just let these people play the games wherever they got to play the games. So I'm hoping that extends to mobile and, and, and to handhelds and stuff. But at the same time, they're still, it's not day and date. None of this is day and date. PC games, PC ports come like a year or two later. And like the article said, adding adding a game to PlayStation Plus is a year or more away. Yeah, they're very so, slow with it. They're definitely they're, very they're slow very, it. It, they're, they're very insular. You know, I think it's been said, like, they're at the top for so long, they can't really see the bottom anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're doing things their way because it's been working for them, but they're not really seeing how the rest of the industry is evolving yeah. and changing. So they think they're changing with the times and being hit with what the kids want to do, but they're doing it in that Sony way that isn't quite the same. Like handheld streaming, like handheld gaming, thanks to the Switch, and I'm saying thanks to the Switch because it's really the Switch's fault, um, is big. It's big. It's back. You know, we have the Switch. We have the Steam Deck. We have the Logitech uh, streaming uh, G Cloud. We have um, the ROG Ally. And those are all, like, doing well. They're popular. Like, they get a lot of buzz. Sony's like, all right, we'll do our version. It's the weird-ass Project Q. You know, that's completely against the grain of what everyone else is doing. Yeah. So the way the way they seem to be handling cloud streaming seems to be going around the same route. Instead of doing what everyone else seems to be doing, like not just Xbox, but even what Nvidia is doing with their um, G Cloud, they're doing like, no, we're going to do it the Sony way. I think that Xbox is in a position to really do some crazy handheld shit yeah. because um, PlayStation already threw their hat in the ring. But they, they're they doing it through streaming for yeah. whatever reason. Uh, Microsoft's over here. There's already a market for all these PC handhelds and stuff. Yeah. All Microsoft needs to do is just make the experience a little nicer <laughs> on a Windows handheld. Yeah. Uh, that's it. And then they, they would enter the handheld market so strongly that way. And they don't even need to sell hardware. They could sell... Uh, all their their software company they they sell it on the software end yeah so i think that ironically sony put microsoft in a better position (laughs) (laughs) um our dad in the chat uh said where is it uh glad you killed this mosquito was really bugging me (laughs) he said did you know the lost mini submarine operates with a logitech gamepad I did. I did see. I the did picture. see that, and that I think we funny. owned that Logitech gamepad. Not that one. Oh. No, we. Know, I don't think we own that specific one. Was it wireless? I don't think it was. But if it was, well, they, I, that would be such a bad idea. Yes, that one was wireless because I think the blue one is wired. There's two versions of that same one. I think the blue one is wired and the silver one is wireless. That's why they're lost. Yeah, that's that's it. That controller is at least 15, 20 years old. It really doesn't make I'll any say, sense. I'll say 15 years old. Really makes no because, sense like, why they wouldn't put an Xbox controller on. Yeah, there. like I know I know like the US military uses Xbox controllers for certain things. So It's the most universal easiest to use well, controller. Well, I think the lot that Logitech controller was like the first third-party controller to like try to mimic the Xbox style for PC. So that's why it's been around for so long. Cuz that was around the time when the 360 finally like uh, standardize what a PC controller should be. Mm-hmm. And Logitech's like, all right, we'll do that. And they put out that piece of junk. It's possible it disconnected and nobody knew how to reconnect it <laughs> because it, it's not easy. Yeah. And imagine that. Imagine you have three days until air depletes yeah. to figure out how to sync a controller. Yeah. Now, we would probably be able to figure it out. Right. But as somebody who's never seen a Bluetooth controller before, Life or death? I don't think they could do it. I don't know if that one was Bluetooth though. I think they had a, uh, a dongle. If they had a, a receiver. Oh well, then it can't yeah. disconnect. Then I mean, unless you know, there, there's really bad reception down there. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, Dad says, why don't they just play Mario in that submarine? He swims pretty good. He does, but he still got to come up for air. He still got to come up for air. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, so that's, that's, that's where PlayStation's at. Uh, yeah. that they, they, I mean, it makes sense for them to test PlayStation 5 streaming. It, uh, yeah. That, that, like that, why else would they make a whole device to, to stream? Yeah. Well, why else would they make a whole device just for remote play? 
the, yeah. the remote yeah. play aspect of it is extremely limiting. Extremely limiting, and it's really bad right now. Yeah. I suspect that when the Project Q comes out, street like remote play will be slightly better. Uh, I suspect that there will also be remote or or or, or server streaming of some kind. Yeah. Uh, and it will be pretty good because right now it's pretty good. It's pretty good on on PC. I don't know. It's too many games to play. There are a lot of games. I liked. I enjoyed my two seconds that I played of Steep. <laughs> Got to try it a little more. Maybe I'll jump in when uh the next when the project Q comes yeah. out. Anyway, thank you to Hanuman K1 for the twelve months here for the Prime sub. Love you guys. I'll catch you guys in the YouTube channel. Thanks, dude. Thanks for being here. Um. All right, where are we now? We are on the uh, Nintendo Switch piracy subreddit banned after giant Tears of the Kingdom leak. So this is interesting. You know, I was dabbling a little bit in in Switch emulation, <gasps> and I was a little surprised to see the easiest way to get Switch games was just a just a subreddit that just had them and people, and people were just trading them and trading keys right, around. Somebody right. was like key for this game. And they're like, here it is. I was like, well, are you serious right now? Well, copy paste. And then not there anymore. Uh, the Nintendo switch piracy subreddit, our new Yuzu piracy managed to fly under the radar for years. However, on June 13th, three years after it was originally created, Reddit banned the forum after it blew up in the wake of a massive pre-release leak of the legend of Zelda tears of the kingdom. AKA the greatest game of all time. Um, as first reported by PC Gamer, the subreddit doubled in size last month, going from over 37,000 members, add, uh, 37,000 members in early May to over 69,000 after Tears of the Kingdom leaked early. Nice. And pirated copies of the game subsequently began to proliferate online. Uh, Yuzu is a software that lets users legally emulate Switch games they own on PC. But many players simply opt to use illegally downloaded copies instead. Uh, one illicit copy of Tears of the Kingdom. Once illicit copies of Tears of the Kingdom began circulating, users on the subreddit shared download links as well as tips for avoiding bugs and fixing emulator settings to get the best possible performance out of the game. Links for the mods were also exchanged as well as save file editors. Uh, we were exper we were expecting it to happen. User Innova Absolute posted on the, uh, the subreddit. Uh, 128 bit bay uh, earlier this week it was only a matter of when the reason reddit gave for the ban was that um, our new yuzu piracy served the same objective as a previously banned or quarantined subreddit seemingly a reference to the original r yuzu piracy board uh, the new community however had managed to survive for years without trouble prior to the tears of the kingdom mess uh, it is unclear if reddit just did uh, just didn't take notice of the forum for some reason until it doubled in size or if nintendo got involved following the leaks the mario maker has uh, taken an increasingly aggressive approach to piracy and mods as well as leaks and legal emulation in the past few months and went after popular youtubers for making videos about unofficial mod uh, multiplayer add-ons for breath of the wild it's a peanut discord for the personal in information of an alleged tears of the kingdom art put leaker and ad uh, advised valve to remove a steam listing for the gamecube and wii u emulator dolphin it's weird that this article said uh, they called Nintendo the Mario Maker. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Because I got excited because <laughs> I heard Mario Maker. Uh, this is just, uh, I mean, of course they took this down. It was sharing. Yeah. It was sharing the, the, nin, 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 Nintendo games illegally. But like like the article said, it after <clears throat> three years. So something, must, something had to have changed. Either it was, you know, the increase in members or more likely Nintendo came knocking on their door oh yeah it's because nintendo got wind of it because of tears of the kingdom yeah right? because of the influx of people wanting to play tears of the kingdom without paying for it yeah uh and yeah of course of course they're gonna take that down yeah. um have you been keeping up with what's going on with reddit lately it's yes been, it's been yeah. messed up it's uh, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, like I, I, I know. Like, I used to refresh Reddit. Like all, I don't real. I didn't realize how much I used to refresh. Reddit. So I'm not really like a big Reddit guy. I don't go on Reddit all the time. Like I, I only really go. To I it read if, it. I don't partake. Yeah, I just. Yeah, like I didn't partake like either. But like I didn't even do that. I would only go, to like to follow a link somewhere. Like if someone posted a link, or like specifically if I needed to look something up. 
Yeah. And like this past week, I needed to look something up because I'm messing around with my analog pocket and like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Straight up nothing. The the, the anal- there were two analog subreddits that were really important and yeah. they're freaking gone now. Yeah. Um right before the show, I went to go to our Nintendo to see what everybody's talking about, and that's gone. Yeah. Uh so what's going on right now is uh Reddit did the Twitter thing and they uh, decided to charge for API access. Yes. And a lot of people use third party apps to view Twitter, especially mods. Mods of these subreddits uh, use third party apps to moderate their subreddits. Right. Uh, and now Reddit decided we can charge for API access, so we're going to. Yeah. And a lot of these third-party apps decided to just close down. They're like, we're not going to pay that because we don't make any money. We, we just do this for funsies. So, Well, it, it's not just that you know Reddit is now charging for the API. They are charging based on volume. So yeah. like an app like Apollo, the most, po- like the most popular Reddit app, at least on iOS, like they said that in order to meet you know, what Reddit's asking for, we would have to pay $20 million dollars. Which we do not have. Yeah. So, like, for a lot of these companies, like, Reddit is basically asking the impossible. Yeah. So, it's either pay us all the money or don't. Basically, what they're doing is they're trying to, like, price everybody out of the market so that you have to use their dumb app. Yeah. I mean, Reddit has had problems making money since their inception. Yeah. Um, Twitter really fucked up the whole internet. <laughs> Elon Musk buying Twitter that was, fucked yeah. everything up. Yeah. Because uh, now all these companies got all weird about it. They all yeah. got weird about having making their s- services free. Yeah. Which is how they've all made money for so long. It's why these things are so popular. It's because they've been free for so long. Yeah. And now they're trying to squeeze money out of every little avenue that they can. And it's hurting the sites. It's hurting users. So all these subreddits decided, uh, you know what? We don't like the yeah. way Reddit's going. We're going to just stop. And uh, these moderators do, they moderate these subreddits for free. You know, mm-hmm. they just do it because they like the, 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 the yeah, stuff. Yeah, they feel like they're part of a community. Yeah. And uh, they decide it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. So they just, they're closing down the, the, the subreddits. Uh, uh, some of them have reopened. They only, the, 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 the like official strike was only for like 48 hours. Yeah. But um, a lot of them are still closed. Like a lot of them, yeah. Uh, Steam Deck, Switch, uh, Analog, like a lot of these sub, and all of these subreddits are there. There's just years of troubleshooting history, yeah, that are now locked away for forever. Uh, you can go to like a cache of them, but it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not as easy. It's not yeah. as easy to find these the 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 archive of of all of this helpful information that we have. Yeah. I watched uh, uh, Moist Critical talking about it. <clears throat> and I was very disappointed how much he was vilifying Reddit mods. Because right. it's like, if it's uh, it's all fun and games to like, you know, make fun of Discord mods and Reddit mods. Because yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of them take their jobs way too seriously. But like, these people are just fanatical about the thing that the, that, that the subreddit's about. Like, People who moderate the Steam Deck community on 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 the Steam yeah. Deck subreddit are probably just really active users in the Steam Deck community, and they're like, you know what, might as well be a mod. So like, they're doing this shit for free, and and they're basically running Reddit for free. Yeah, all of these different communities. So yeah, fuck them. I mean, it's like <laughs> it happened to Vine. Like Vine was yeah had all of these users. That were making them all the money, and then the users basically unionized and were yeah. like, "Give us money." And Vine was like, "No." And they're like, "All right, goodbye. Bye. We'll and go then to YouTube." Vine closed, and so, we'll ruin YouTube. I kind of hope that happens to Reddit, yeah, because uh, I don't want them to get away with this. And I've been just instinctively going to Reddit and refreshing it, and it's the same like three subreddits that are still up. Yeah. One of them is r slash pics, which is just pictures, and they're. They're revolting by only posting pictures of John Oliver. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so it it I don't know where else to go. I don't know where yeah. else to 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 be able to keep up to date with all of these different communities and stuff. Twitter. Yeah. But that's going to shit too. Yeah. So I don't no, know. I'm on Twitter right now and it's I don't every day I'm like, why am I on this stupid fucking thing? I use Twitter DMs a lot and yeah. they 
might start limiting DMs. Really? Yeah. Like daily, D, like a daily limit on DMs. Oh, unless you pay eight bucks a month, like yep. an asshole. Yep. Yeah. It's re- it's insane. Yeah. This whole this whole thing is fucking insane. And I'll say it again: making it make making Twitter a utility is 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 perfectly reasonable because it's 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 in, it's a social media site. I think the internet should be a utility. I think social media should be a utility. Right. Uh, free speech is not free if you pay eight fucking dollars <laughs> to get yourself up in the ranking. Yeah. That's not free speech. Yeah. That's paid speech. It's literally paid speech. Yeah. Well, neither is, you know, banning journalists for, like, posting articles, you know, disparaging of the guy who owns the website. But I yeah. digress. Yeah. What do I know? <laughs> Just a fat, balding guy I'm, on I'm, Long Island. I'm getting sick of, like, going to, like, a popular uh, user's tweet, and the first, like, ten are all blue check marks with wildly skewed opinions. And yeah. then you go down, you see all the normal people. And it's like, yeah. oh. Oh, there I, you are. Not everyone's crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, where the fuck are we? Uh, f- We did switch piracy. Anybody yeah. do anything? Oh, we got some stuff. Cool. We got a uh, sock monkey with 200 bits. Bob, you're one of the realest down-to-earth guys out there. Yo, thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, the passion you have for game slash tech and straight talk. Made you one of the easiest subscriptions I've ever made. Keep it up, man. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Sock Monkey. And Hack Monkey. Thanks for the prime. A lot of monkeys in the chat today. Yo, bring all the monkeys. Bring all the monkeys. Uh, Will, random question. Any online source to check to see the potential value of comic books? Um, What the hell is that? Uh, it used to, it, Back in the day, um, you didn't go to the internet because there was no internet. You had to look for a book. And I believe it was called the Overstreet Pricing Guide. That was like the official book of like uh, looking up the value of what a comic book was, depending on, you know, the, the grade of it, like whether it was mint, near mint, very fine or what have you. I think it's called Overstreet. And I believe they have a website that you can use. Um, I haven't used it in years because I honestly, I don't really follow the value of comics. I don't read or collect for value. I do it just for funsies. So, uh, but Overstreet is, I believe, is it Overstreet? I only know of price charting. Let me just let me just make That's sure. That's comic books and video games. Pricecharting.com. Uh, uh, yeah, over the Overstreet comic book uh, price guide. That's uh, that's what you want to look for, and it comes out they like. It comes out like at least once a year. Um, underscore says Reddit started because Dig changed things about how content was added and some added revenue share shit. I remember that. I mean, I don't remember that is why it died. I remember I used to go on Dig all the time and then one day it was just over. Right. But it, it turned fast for them. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Pliskin, thanks for the two months. Apparently, Reddit, Red, uh, sorry, not Reddit. Logitech stock is down like sharply because the controller. Yeah, and it's like a fifteen-year-old <laughs> controller, man. Their new controllers are probably fine. Yeah, I, I you know what it is because like investors and stock market people are kind of idiots. Yes, and I think they see like, oh, this controller can't find a submarine. <laughs> Just sell all your stock. This controller is the reason the submarines. I yeah. mean, it is probably, but it's not. It's because it's fucking 15 years old. Yeah. I mean, even still, like if they used a 360 controller, which is also 15 years old, they'd probably be in the same. Boat. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I think, think the so. I think 360 I think so. controller would have fared I, a little no, better. I, I think. I think. I think so. Anyway, where are we now? Uh, Dan Hauser's new studio. What? Who, yes. Who, who is this? Dan Hauser. Uh, is this my old GameStop manager? No. Dan okay. Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games, as well as the former creative oh, yeah. director and lead writer of games such as GTA V, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Bully, has opened a new studio called Absurd Ventures. Uh, the studio intends to create new IPs available on multiple platforms, and that includes more than video games. The studio plans on creating worlds that can be produced for live action, animation, video games, comic books, and more. In a press release, Hauser stated that they are building absurd ventures to create new universes and tell great stories wherever and however we can. 
It's also worth noting that even though Hauser is just getting the studio off the ground, it was first incorporated in 2021. Thanks to a VGC report, we know it was fully incorporated on June 23rd of that year. This could mean work has been underway for some time. Since officially incorporating Absurd Ventures, Hauser has been uh, living the high life. It was previously reported that Hauser and his wife, um, Christiana uh jaku bayak not All sure right. why we needed her full name that's a star wars name yes <laughs> not a uh, real person paid 8.5 million dollars for a home in los angeles california this would make it uh their third in the region and at least the fourth property in the united states uh yeah so there you go the guy who made all of your favorite gta games finally announced his new studio what's what are the chances this game's gonna be like good like how how involved was he in the uh he was very good involved. grand theft auto games <laughs> him and his brother sam like basically took over the franchise starting with three okay and like just shepherded the whole the whole studio from there not just like the grand theft auto games but like everything bully um they took red red dead revolver was a capcom game that rockstar purchased and then red dead redemption was their pet project mm -hmm. And the Warriors on PlayStation 2 was because they, like, the Hauser brothers, were like, yo, I fucking love the Warriors. Let's make a game out of it. You know, Max Payne 3 only exists because they wanted to make a Max Payne game because they own the rights to it. So have they ever missed is my next question. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Okay. When you think about, like, the Rockstar games under, like, the Hauser era. So the GTAs of Bully, uh, Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, the Warriors, Max Payne 3, um... Those are all critically acclaimed games. Those are all very uh, well-liked games. The Grand Theft Auto games obviously sell more copies than any video game ever. You know, they're they're the be best-selling games of all time. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2, um, equally as big, big of a seller. I mean, the first one was, but then Red Dead Redemption 2 took it over the edge. Uh, the only thing, like, Max Payne 3 didn't hit like certain sales expectations it sold well but i think they were trying to get gta numbers out of max Payne, and like that's not what max Payne can do mm -hmm. um so they haven't really missed however they when dan Hauser was at rockstar he had rockstar money not like Rock and roll rock star, but like rock star studios yeah, money. Millions and millions and hundreds million, of millions of yeah, dollars. To make these games. Yeah. And he had the money and the time to make these games the juggernauts that they were. I think it was like recently rumored that like GTA 5 actually cost close to a billion dollars to make. Yeah. There is no way this guy has a billion dollars to make his next game. Yeah, I mean I was gonna say that, but you made me feel a little better when you talk about games like bully and warriors and stuff yeah. like those are smaller games yeah uh but it's been a long time since he's done something like that mm -hmm. last couple of games tens if not hundreds of million dollar games yeah you know so uh it's possible that he also wasn't there also some weird working conditions with dan hauser yeah because i'd imagine that his standards are going to be incredibly high and he's got much less of a budget now and he's going to work people to the bone. Yeah. Like there was a lot of talk of, um, you know, crunch was very, you know, very big over at rockstar. Um, they tried to like walk back and saying like, it was, it's only like the Hauser brothers and a couple of upper management guys. We don't ask people to stay, but there were a lot, there's a lot of talk about like, you know, I think, I think it was called the rockstar wives who like, you know, sent a letter to the company saying like our husbands have been working too long and then we don't see them anymore. Yeah. You know, so there, there have been a lot of, you know, rumors of like excessive crunch when unnecessary and things like that. Um, you know, and I don't know if, you know, this new studio is, you know, the people he hired, if they're going to want to work under those conditions or not. Yeah. I mean, uh, people are getting less willing to do that. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it's also too, like you hear, you know, from the creator of Grand Theft Auto, the next big game, I think a lot of people are instantly going to assume this is going to be just a Grand Theft Auto level game or like even bigger than that. And I think we got to get that out of our heads right now because I don't see that happening, at least on the first go around, you know? Yeah. It's got to be a smaller thing. Yeah. Maybe he'll do a table tennis game like the Rockstar table tennis. <laughs> uh. 
flow. And, well, that one actually sold a fuck ton, but it wasn't a cheap as shit. Rockstar table tennis. Yeah, not that it was cheap. Like that was basically to test out the their in house engine. Because it hit five dollars like almost immediately. Yeah, but it did sell a lot. People it, really yeah, it sold liked a lot. It. Yeah, but like I said, like that was the first game made on Rage, the Rockstar Advance uh, game engine. Okay, and that then powered all of their games up until now. So that was literally just to test their engine. Uh, Flow says, according to price charting, their Uncanny X Men is worth two hundred and three dollars. Nice. And I just went to look it up to make sure that it wasn't like a rated ten or something. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it seems uh, I can't tell. It seems like uh, there's a lot of different versions. Oh, Raw two o three. Oh, okay. Yeah. So as long as it's in decent condition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A nine point eight sold for a thousand. Oh yeah. Uh, word of advice if you're looking up prices don't assume you own anything higher than a seven yeah because any little problem you have in that comic book like an official like grader will see and dock you like five points and it's all a scam it most it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't it's all arbitrary and doesn't mean anything anyway yeah. you won't get a nine unless you are part of the scheme unless yeah. you are part of the uh the the the, the inner circle yeah you're you're not getting a high rated uh, yeah because uh, even anything. if you steal a copy from the factory as it gets published and printed as it gets printed and you steal it off the printer and you bring it to them to grade they will give you an eight because they will find a nick see i used to think it was problems with like printing and stuff that they would and they'd see it and they'd be like no this isn't perfect enough but yeah now I'm just convinced that it's all a scam. Yeah. And and they do that on purpose. And they they save the tens for people who uh are trying to launder money. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Uh where are we? We got Thrill House, who says uh this is about the submarine thing. Yes. They play in Subnautica for real for real. Yes. Uh Kale, thanks for the four months. And Mackenzie, thanks for the twelve months. Wow, it's our one-year anniversary. How sweet. Oh, my God. How sweet. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. Next up, uh, Microsoft. Oh, yes. Uh, don't expect any new games from Xbox Game Studios uh, to be released on Xbox One. Microsoft Good. is reportedly focused on the Xbox Series X and S from here on out, other than supporting previously released games on the last jet system. Excuse me. Um, that's what game Xbox Game Studio had Matt Booty told Axios, uh, which noted that this changeover was bound to happen at some point. We've moved on to Gen 9, Booty says, referring to Xbox Series X and S. Get a new name. <laughs> I always feel bad when people like name Booty or Butts, you know? <laughs> or ass. Or ass. <laughs> um, Booty added... <laughs> We were, yep, we are, booty yeah. added. We are adults in our thirties. We both own homes. Um, <laughs> booty added that there are in, internal teams supporting games on Xbox One still, such as Minecraft. In addition, Halo Infinite uh, is starting to receive more consistent season updates that are continuing to arrive on last gen consoles. If you only have an Xbox One, Booty pointed out. God damn it, Booty's pointing out. <laughs> He pointed out that Xbox Series X and S games are playable through cloud gaming with Game Pass. Um, this allows for titles like Flight Simulator to be played on Xbox One. There have also been complaints about the Series S by at least one developer in the past. Baldur's Gate 3 has also hit a snag on Series S recently. Uh, the issue is Microsoft requires games to come out on Series X and S. Booty says that won't change, though he acknowledges it's uh, more work. For some studios, earlier this week, Booty opened up about the rocky release of Redfall. As for Microsoft, check out the biggest <laughs> announcers from the uh, game showcase in Starfield. Direct. I was waiting for you to hit that one. Earlier this week, Booty, Booty opened up. <laughs> <laughs> I am a father of two. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking dumb name. Uh, what does okay. he do? What is he? He's the... I just closed the window. He's like Matt that. Booty. Uh... Xbox Game Studios. What is he? He's the uh, the head of Xbox Game Studios. He's like just under Phil Spencer. Get a get a different guy. He can't do it anymore. <laughs> Change the name or get out. Um, 
good. I think it's good that they're not uh, doing Xbox One anymore. They can barely do Xbox Series S. True. Yeah. It, it, it always just sucks to hear that, like, when when it, it's always sad because it basically means something's dying and death is sad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I used to work at GameStop and I would sit there and be like, why? Are they still making games for the PS2? Like, yeah. why is Madden still coming out for the PS2? You know? Well, it's, I mean, just it's the only reason we got the PS2 section open at GameStop is because they just keep well, putting. Well, you gotta Madden remember, there. like, you know, how many years did Just Dance come out for the Wii? Yeah, like if a if a system did they is, stop yet? I don't know if they stopped yet. If a system is popular enough, somebody is gonna find an excuse to keep putting games out for it. You know, the Xbox One wasn't necessarily popular, so I'm surprised they it took them this long to like stop making new games for it. But that doesn't mean other companies aren't going to make games for it. You know, the Series X and S is very similar in architecture to the Xbox One, so it would stand to reason that they would just make a lower quality version, unless they really. Well, that's can. the thing is that the lower quality version is getting harder and harder to to develop for or or, right. or, or or yeah the standards are getting higher and higher yeah. now um they stopped making just dance a while ago for the wii for the wii u even yeah oh wait no they stopped for the wii u but they kept going for the wii you're right, right. you're yeah. right the the last one what <laughs> the last one was 2020 yeah and that did not come for the wii u at all yeah but it came for the wii that's crazy yeah. when did they stop for the wii u uh oh 2019 yeah that's insane if you think about it like there's like daycare centers and stuff that only and like you know like old folks homes that just have a week yeah so like same thing like a playstation 2 they haven't upgraded in years because they don't really care yeah so why 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 would they spend a couple hundred dollars well i remember during the wii era a lot of games are still coming out on PS2. Like they would get the Wii version, then they would be ported down to PS2. Because that's Cause, that was relatively easy. Yeah, it was similar in hardware. Was, yeah. And like the PS2 is still the best selling system of all time. So like everyone had a PS2. Yeah, that's so, what I was saying around yeah. that time. I was like, why? Why yeah. are we doing this still? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah so that only makes sense, I, and I'm kind of happy that they're doing. Yeah, that. I would be upset if they stop developing for the Series S. Yeah, that they. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I know the industry wants them to stop. Yeah, but I hope they don't. Yeah, I hope I hope they don't either. <laughs> it's possible we hit one day where they start uh, forcing people to stream games from the series. End. Yes, I that would not surprise me. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised we haven't hit that yet either. Yeah, I mean, it would stand like you know, Starfield is going to run on the series S, but I wouldn't be surprised if like a game like Starfield. You know, said it's coming out on Series X natively, but you can only play it streaming yeah. on Series S. But then that opens up a whole nother set of questions because this is a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's it's good because it fills time. <laughs> <laughs> so like on the, on the Switch, right? Resident Evil 7. Uh, if you buy the game and you stream it, but that's it. You just pay the one price for the game. On Xbox, it works a little different because streaming a game is part of game pass yeah so if you own a series s and again i'm just going to keep using starfield because it's like the best example if starfield is streaming only on series s does that mean you have to have a game pass subscription or can you buy the game just the game and it knows to stream it to your series s that will have to be figured out yes that will require digital for sure. Yes. Well, yeah, it's a Series S anyway. You yeah. can't plug in a, a drive anyway. Uh, I'd assume that Microsoft would have the foresight to allow you to buy the game digitally and stream it. Yeah. If we ever hit that point. But that's also not that good of a deal because yeah. you can... I mean, a game like Starfield, that's a game you could spend thousands of hours in. Yeah. So maybe it is worth it to, to buy it outright. But I feel like for most people... Game Pass, fifteen dollars just to play Starfield when it launches. Because yeah. maybe you're only gonna play it for a month. Maybe you're just gonna go through the story. It's always gonna be cheaper if yeah. you're just doing the campaign. That's the way it was with freaking uh, uh Halo. Yeah. Halo was gone Game Pass, so like why would I buy it? Yeah. Anyway. Uh okay. 
let's talk about this Steam overhaul. Okay. Because I tried to look into this. I watched <laughs> the video, but uh, it seemed interesting at first, and then I kind of lost the news. <laughs> In April, Valve uh, revealed it was overhauling Steam in a big way, not just a fresh coat of paint, but also unifying the code base between its desktop, big picture mode, and Steam Deck interfaces, adding new features like a handy cloud notepad and pinnable panels in the in-game overlay, so, revamping so its web browser and screenshot manager and notifications tab, and adding hardware acceleration for Linux and Mac. So I'm going to just write off. The I remember this now. I remember yeah. why I lost interest so immediately. So... I really want Steam to change their UI. It's a horrible UI. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's good in some ways, but really terrible in a lot of ways. Having a unified experience across different devices makes perfect sense. I really want that. That would be really cool to yeah. have the same experience across Steam Deck, across PC, across Mac. That'd be great. Uh, one of the best things about Steam is that you can use it on all those different devices. They're saying they're simplifying stuff, this little video is so complicated. <laughs> There's so much shit here. They added a notes feature. Who gives a shit? Apparently Who wants to do that? Apparently that's been there. A lot of people apparently use it. Because like if you're playing bullshit, I'm calling bullshit. If you're on playing that. like a, a really super nerdy game, like an like an, like an RPG or an RTS or something like that, mm -hmm. that you can like write little notes about like, oh, go back here uh, when you get the key or put that in the here. game. Then I don't get, I don't want that in a, uh, too too much bloat. Right. You know, like, I don't need that in my fucking Counter Strike. I mean, I forgot what game it was, but I actually like physically wrote down notes with a pen and paper like yeah. an old man yeah that's I mean, what fine. That's, that's what they added here Instead i of, take notes when i'm like want to talk about like the new zelda game yeah. on the podcast so i don't forget things but i'm not gonna open up steam i got a <laughs> fucking pen and paper next to me right you know well you know paper is a dying medium daddy oh it's about time you enter the 21st <laughs> right. century i'll 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 be honest i use a google keep document on a second browser yeah and i and you can't get me to use the steam notes <laughs> i will still use a google keep document uh Gr Gr griffinix in the chat says 3ds had a notes feature <laughs> that's a little different yeah that's a little different uh while much of that has been available in beta today's the day it goes wide with a full stable release so if your steam looks rather different and that's why and uh reader this uh the article's writer game the the i'm trying i'm trying to make this because this is written in first person and i didn't write it so <laughs> the writer of this article and their gaming colleagues have been impressed by how much um they like the fresh coat of paint older changes to the store to the store and library tabs notwithstanding um steam has looked like an ancient application for a very long time and now it's nice <laughs> uh the writer is most excited for the cloud notepad. Oh, Bob's favorite feature, oh, uh, which I can, which can confirm uh, works on Steam Deck, though it doesn't look like you can uh, use it as a translucent uh, in-game overlay like you can on a desktop just yet. Uh, you can find it from the inside the game by hitting your Steam button, then scrolling down to notes. Uh, I just opened Steam on my Mac. Uh, it's updating. Oh, there it is. Uh, it looks the same. It, it looks the same. <laughs> I'm not impressed at all. I was playing Counter Strike like a week ago. Yeah. Uh, it took so long for me to figure out how to just change my icon. Yeah. It's it's so needlessly complicated. Everything about Steam. Um. Anyway, I do really like the fact that somewhere a few a few months ago, they unified big picture mode. So now, big picture mode on Windows has different resolutions and mm -hmm. it pretty much acts just like a steam deck so you could just get a windows handheld yeah and turn it into a steam deck using big picture mode and it still has windows that's freaking cool i like a lot of what they're doing but that shit needs a redesign really bad uh this isn't in the keep i'm gonna put it here now uh okay. i figured while we're talking about this um we should talk about updates to mu deck i was on the nerd nest podcast today okay. uh, a bunch of emulation youtubers it was pretty much like spawn cast but uh emulation people mm -hmm. uh and they reminded me that mu deck which is the one and done 
one click installer application for the Steam Deck mm -hmm. that just installs all of the emulators and has a perfect UI and just works flawlessly right out of the gate. You just yes. literally just click a button and it installs all the shit you need to do emulation on a Steam Deck. That is coming to Windows. Ooh. So that's really cool. A lot of devices will be able to use it. My freaking arcade cabinet. I'll just freaking do that yeah. on my arcade cabinet and everything will work great. Also, they're working on an Android version, which will make all of these Android uh, emulation devices that I talk about so much better, yeah. so much easier to use, and so much easier to recommend to people. But I think the Windows version is coming first, and I, I think Retro Game Core is going to have a video like this weekend, potentially, about it. So uh, if you've been turned off by Windows handhelds because uh, they're complicated to start up and use, this might make things a little bit easier. Uh, I think they're targeting the ROG Ally at first because that's like the most popular right, Windows right. handheld right now. Uh, and I'm excited for that. I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm, I think That'll I'm most cool. excited to put it on my arcade cabinet because yeah. uh, I want to put... So uh, Emulation Station is a very popular front end. It hasn't been updated in years. Right. So This is like the most up-to-date version. So this is really cool to see. I have a really old version of Emulation Station on my... Uh, arcade cabinet that doesn't recognize the controller of the arcade cabinet so <laughs> i want it i want an emulation station I, i'm gonna probably just put a new controller in the arcade cabinet one of these right. days uh it's a shit it was a uh, that that controller is is a little shitty it, it's like good for a raspberry pi and like that's it mm -hmm. i need something that's like x input Anyway, this is really cool. So check this out uh, later if you have any Windows handhelds or if you're excited about Emulation Station on Android. A nice little uh, front end for your for your stuff. Anyway. Oh, we should have talked about Starfield. Yes. Because that, that was... Uh, oh, they're both kind of segues. Yeah. But we'll talk about Starfield. Okay. Uh, playing Starfield on PC will require an SSD. That makes sense. That, yes. that games are doing that now. Uh, Bethesda's highly anticipated action RPG Starfield can only be played on PCs that have an SSD installed with 125 gigabytes of free space available. The Steam page for Starfield lists the system requirements in order to play games, uh, and an additional note states SSD required. The game installation takes up to 125 gigs of storage space, so you'll likely struggle to free up enough if your PC or laptop relies on a 250 gig SSD. Even if you meet the storage requirements, the rest of the spec you'll need uh, to play this game is quite demanding. An absolute minimum, your system must be running an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X uh, or an Intel Core i7-6800K, 16 gigs of RAM, and either an AMD Radeon uh, RX 5700 or an NVIDIA GeForce 1070 Ti. Windows 10 22H2 is also required as a minimum. Perhaps this is an excuse you need to buy a new gaming PC or laptop. Mm -hmm. 1070 Ti is pretty low. Yeah. I think. Am I wrong, guys? I don't, I don't know. It I, came out a while ago. Yeah. Or I guess it's a Ti, so maybe not that long ago. Uh, now, it's interesting that they just... Stri oh, it came out 2017. That's actually not long. Yeah. 2017 is not that long ago. Uh... It's interesting that they're just saying SSD required. They're not saying the speed of the SSD that's that's required. No. They're just saying as long as you got an SSD, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure any SSD is better than a hard drive. Because mm -hmm. like, they, they must not be able to get this game running on a hard drive. Or like maybe a hard drive is too slow. I mean, that's the thing with this generation of games is that... Uh, the big deal was the speeds of the drive. Right. Being able to have a physical uh, a memory that acts like RAM yeah. is, is, was supposed to be revolutionary. But it's, a, it's still a double-edged sword because, I mean, yes, you get the speed of an SSD compared to like a, an old mechanical hard drive. But mechanical hard drives are not only cheaper, but you get more storage for your yeah. money. So a lot of a lot of gamers are still relying on hard drives to hold all of their games. Starfield is a 125 gig game. 
Yeah. And, you know, some SSDs, you know, if you want, if you're trying to save money, you might not be able to get anything more than a 500 gig. I'm running SSD. out of space pretty, pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. So, like, it's a, you know, what do you do? Do you spend an arm and a leg to get a big SSD or do you save a couple bucks and get a big hard drive? You know, now yeah. you have to get both. I mean, uh, if you're building a computer, it it it's pretty much required to have a big SSD that's just for game, yeah. just for games. Like have one for all your system apps and stuff and have one specifically for games. Uh, I got a really tiny pre-built thing and I have a just one SSD yeah. and then one drive that is basically my Dropbox stuff. <laughs> Um, my old computer that I gave to you that yes. I think you threw out. No, it's still in the closet. I haven't thrown it out yet. <laughs> Yuck it. Uh, <laughs> that has like eight drives in it. Yeah. And one of them was uh, an SSD for games. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have that anymore. Um, but no, it makes sense. The, 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 they're going to need fast load times. Yeah. The, the, the way to do that is, is SSD. Yeah. You're going to be flying into space. You want that moon to render immediately. Yeah. Um, so I understand easiest way to get around these PC requirements buy a console, buy a console. <laughs> all you need is a series S. Yeah. Actually, all you need is a device that could play game pass. Mm. Uh, we got a subscription from spank shake. Thanks dude. Thank you. Uh, Shang long. Finally in Street Fighter. He began what? life as a mistake that sparked one of the greatest hoaxes in all of video games. Now, 30 years later, he's finally in a video game. You know about the Shang Long? No. Okay. Let's let's go let's go for this history I've been lesson. I played Street Fighter Six. How is it? I like it a lot. I, so I, here, really, I really want to get into it. Here's my thing with Street Fighter Six. I started with the story mode. Yeah. Uh, the mode where you make your own character. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Just abysmal. Right. Um. Because you don't have, like, all of the... You don't have, like, good moves, like, when you start the game. Right. I think you copy the new guy who looks like Leffen. I forgot his name. Oh, Luke yeah. Or yeah. something. You, I think you're supposed to copy his moves. But uh, either his moves are horrible or I don't have all of them. Right. Um, And then you just fight, like, minions the whole time. And, like, you upgrade... I Like, I really wanted to upgrade my shirt and stuff. But there's yeah. very limited, like, customizations. And everything costs money that you... That's hard to get. I do appreciate the money is called Zenny. And I think that's from uh, Mega Man 64. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Or is it called Zelly? No, that's the that's the Chase yeah. app that you pay yeah. for. I think Zenny is from uh, Mega Man 64. Got it. Anyway, uh, it's bad. It's okay. just bad. That's disappointing. Um, but hidden in the menus, there's an arcade mode. Right. And that's the traditional fighting game yeah. mode where you pick a character, you fight five guys and then there's a beginning cinematic and an ending cinematic got it and i like that a lot okay it's very stupid it's not worth 70 dollars to yeah. play that mode but it was for me i like <laughs> i like doing that dumb shit yeah because i wanted to play the the campaign mode the story mode because you know i've been playing the mortal Kombat games for years and i like the way they did it where you know it would one section you know each chapter would be one specific fighter and then like there'd be a story beat there'd be a mortal Kombat match and then there'd be the next story beat. Yeah. Um, it's nowhere near as robust as that. Okay. It's literally just a slideshow in the beginning and yeah. a slideshow at the end. Right. And that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But and I kind of like it. The, the, well, the Street Fighter Six story campaign, like the fact that it was open world that you have to like walk around and like find your next. That's the, yeah, that's the custom character story thing. Yeah. That, like that. That's not good. That's disappointing. It's very bad. That's sad. Yeah. Um. Well, then you'll never get to meet Shang Long because he's in that campaign so Damn it. history lesson shang long was once a myth was the once mythical street fighter secret boss who was mentioned it in reuse a victory quote from the original street fighter 2 where he said you must defeat shang long to stand a chance fans uh speculated about the identity of the mysterious shang long who is he where was he in the game is he ryu and ken's master could he be unlocked somehow? In the pre-internet era, Shang Long was the subject of heated debate in playgrounds across the world. Little did players know that the game was simply that the name was simply the result of a mistranslation of Shoryuken, uh, Street Fighter's famous dragon punch. You must defeat the Shoryuken. 
Yeah, you must. What he what he meant to say was, you must defeat my dragon punch to stand a chance. Uh, oh, because he w- oh, because he won. Okay. Yeah, because whenever Ryu won, he was he was supposed to say, you must defeat my dragon punch to stand a chance. But because translating games back in the nineties was a shit show, they said you must defeat Shang Long. This would be incredibly frustrating. Yeah, to, to to see that and then play the game and be like, where is he? Well. Capitalizing on the speculation, a 1992 April Fool's prank by U.S. Games Magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly tricked people into believing Shang Long was an unlockable boss character in Street Fighter 2. Cue more heated debate in playgrounds across the world as fans tried in vain to fight Shang Long. Now, 30 years later, fans can finally do that in Street Fighter 6. In Street Fighter 6's single-player campaign mode, World Tour, Shang Long can be found on top of the Siren Building in Metro City at night as part of the uh, Fighty Mighty side quest. It's a bit of a fiddly trek to get there to, uh, to the level 90 beast, head to the Bayside Park Street, and enter the Siren Building via the construction site. Climb the steps and ladder all the way to the top using the control panels, uh, to call the moving platforms to, prog- uh, to progress, sprint past the aggressive NPCs if you can. You'll end up in the Siren server room, which are packed with annoying robotic enemies. Sprint past them as you make your way to the first uh, floor of R&D. Get in the lift of the seventh floor. Sorry, oh get God. in the lift to the seventh floor. Run down to the sixth floor, then up the stairs to the roof. From there, climb up to the crane platform and Shang Long will be there. This uh, video from YouTube channel uh, Little Farm Boy shows the way. So I'm, I'm looking up Shang Long now. Yeah. Uh, I guess this is the uh, the April Fool's article. Uh, they did like artwork and everything. Yes. Okay, and and, and now they they use that same character design, more or less. Yeah. I also found that. There's a restaurant in Flushing called Long Shang. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wonder if my weeb friends know about that. <laughs> weeb or weed? Weeb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this is Chinese, so fuck you. <laughs> uh, I. And does anybody know Chinese? Because I can't find the, the place. In, in, <laughs> I'm doing a street view, and I cannot. I, where would I go? If yeah. I was here, everything's in Chinese. There's <laughs> literally no... Long Shang anywhere. Yeah. But I kinda wanna I kinda wanna see it. Yeah. Kinda wanna see what's up. Maybe it's that place. No, that's fresh sushi. It can't be that place. Uh yeah, I'm never gonna see this guy because I don't want to play this game yeah. anymore. I'm done with it, I think. I'd rather just I like because I don't want to play online as me. Right. I want to play online as like one of the cat one of the guys, one yeah, of the cool yeah. guys. Like I I booted up the arcade the, the arcade mode and I played as a uh, uh, Ryu. Uh huh. And I was like, oh my god, it's so much better. This is yeah. so much better than playing as me. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah, I I I'm gonna do that. Okay. Um. I mean, I just think it's cool that after 30 years, they took like this urban legend and finally acknowledged it within the game. Because if this was Mortal Kombat, they would have done it two games later. Yeah, like, that's what they always do. I, I mean, Street Fighter has never had something like this. Like not like really a, like a big yeah. campaign where they throw so much shit into it. Yeah, you know. So, and I guess you know they figured now is the opportunity to do this fun little thing. Yeah, finally acknowledge something in an April Fool's joke mm-hmm. that you know has plagued Street Fighter fans for years. Uh, next traditional gaming shrinks all right this is um this is a big topic there's there's a lot in this article well you better wrap it up all right the best i can summarize it is uh the traditional gaming market as we know it like when we think of gaming we think of like what we talk about here the big games triple a games sony microsoft nintendo that only accounts for 26.7 percent of the entire gaming market Mm -hmm. And it's actually down from what it was a few years ago. Uh, I believe it. The majority of the games industry, the games market, you know, when people say like gaming is bigger than movies and television, that's because of 
all the shit games that we think are not real games, like mobile games and like puzzle games and like desktop PC game, things like that. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I put this article in here because it's a good reminder that like, you know, we think games is one thing and we loudly think games are one thing, but games are more than that. Games are everything. You know, there's all these different types of games out there and it's important to broaden our horizons and realize that before we get pushed out of the market well it's we experience this all the time because our parents will be like hey have you heard about this candy crush yeah why don't you talk about candy crush yeah and it's like i'm not that interesting yeah it's not her demo it's not the same thing um so you see where like uh these incredibly immensely popular games that are either mobile games or like mmos or like, yeah uh, battle royales or something um they hit the mainstream and it's just completely outside of our wheelhouse where it's outside of our 26%. Yeah. Um, So it makes sense. I mean, people watching this, you're all going to be interested in all of the niche stuff that's within that 26%. But you know, people who aren't interested in video games, but definitely play like candy crush and shit on their phone. Yeah. Clash of clans or something. Or wordle or wordle. I still play Wordle. I have not played Wordle. I play Wordle. I, every night, I play Wordle, <laughs> guess the game, mm-hmm. and then uh, the 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 mini crossword. It's a uh, it's, it's, mini crossword. It's part. It's like part of New York Times Wordle. Ah, okay. And I do it in that order. Right. I lost the guess the game last night. What was it? You don't even remember. I'll tell. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you later. I don't want to spoil it for people. Okay. Um, Bob, if you like World, check out Clatter and Waffle Game. All right, I got to know what Waffle Game is. Waffle Game sounds awesome. I'm hungry now. I'm always hungry. Oh, That's you cool. like move the pieces around. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Uh, All right. Uh, where are we at now? Oh, Metal Gear Solid 4. I love a good Metal Gear yes. story. Yes, uh, the real reason why it didn't come to the 360. Uh, f- at one point during pr- uh, its development, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots was running beautifully and smoothly on the Xbox 360. That's according to the game's assistant producer, Ryan Payton, who shares the revelation in Stephen L. Kent's book, The Ultimate History of Video Games, Volume 2. Uh, in the interview, uh, Payton claims that there was no exclusivity deal to ensure that the game was only released on PlayStation 3 and that the decision instead came down to the choice of disc format used in Microsoft's console. Peyton says that at one point Konami set up a team dedicated to seeing if the game could be ported to the 360. Uh, Despite how downtrodden my colleagues were with developing on the PS3, most of them were still hardcore Sony fans and were not in favor of spending resources on such a test, Peyton explains in the book. They believed Metal Gear Solid 4 would look and run terribly on Microsoft's older and inferior hardware. One fateful day, Konami R&D hosted a meeting where we got to see the fruits of their labor. Metal Gear Solid 4 was running beautifully and smoothly on the 360. According to Peyton, although the port was possible on a technical level, it wasn't practical on a physical sense. Because PS3 games um, came on Blu-ray discs, uh, which could hold up to 54 gigs of storage, and Xbox 360 games came on DVDs, which could only hold up to 8 gigs. Uh, bringing Metal Gear Solid 4 to the Xbox 360 would have required putting the game on numerous discs, something Konami wasn't willing to do. This was backed up uh, at the time by Sony's Jack Trenton, who once stated Metal Gear Solid 4 is not only exclusive to PlayStation 3, it's only possible on the PlayStation 3 in part to Blu-ray. Sony has announced last month a remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, called Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, which will be released on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 has never been re-released in, on any other format, meaning it remains to be see, uh, it remains a PlayStation 3 exclusive to this day. It remains to be seen if a Metal Gear Solid uh, Master Collection Volume 2 uh, will contain a port of the game. It would take four discs. Yes. Uh, because the game was about 26 gigabytes. Yes. So it would take four discs to put that. Uh, I also think it's interesting that the game is 26 gigabytes, but they had 54 gigabytes to use up on, on, the, on yes. the disc. Games these days would use all of it. Yes. As much of it <laughs> um, as possible. 
Metal Gear Solid 4 came out in 2008. So that was still early in the PS3 and 360 life cycle. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think multi-disc games were prevalent on the 360 in that era. No, I can't think of one. I think maybe either one of the Mistwalker Studios games, either Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon. Final Fantasy 13 was a million discs. I think it was four discs. But that was later. Yeah, it was like, way later. Uh, LA Noir was like three or four discs. Like that's what I'm saying. Like multi game discs and multi disc games didn't come till later yeah. in life cycle. This was still fairly early. So also like they're leaving out that like I'd imagine it would be very difficult to port over uh all of the wacky uh control configuration stuff. Like uh pressing the buttons harder did different things. Yeah. Uh because it, that was a function of the dual shock three. Also like you know, the the game, we've said this before, the game makes a lot of explicit references to the fact that you're playing on a PlayStation 3. Yeah. There's, you know, Otacon famously says you're playing on a PlayStation 3. You don't have to switch discs. Uh, there's a part where... Th that could be a holdover yeah. from them needing to switch discs yeah. on an Xbox. Well, no, because that was a reference to Metal Gear Solid right. 1 right. when you're in Shadow... Mo not Yeah, it was Shadow Moses. Mm -hmm. And you get to the part where you have to switch discs in that game. And Otacon's like, oh, no, you're on a PS3. You don't have to do that. Then there's another part later in the game where Psycho Mantis shows up, spoiler alert, and he tries to read your – he tries to make your controller dance. And a picture of a PS1 flashes because that had a wire controller and he could do that. Now that you have a wireless controller, he can't do that. Also, there was the whole iPod. Yes. In the well, game, there was an iPod. And, and that would read music off of your PlayStation 3. Right. Well, you could do that on an Xbox 360. You could? Yeah, you could – I used to load, load music on the 360 oh. all the time. Oh, yeah. I would do that in Forza. Yeah. I forgot about that. So you could do that. Actually, I think I plugged my Zune in. Well, yeah. I think you could plug the Zune in and it would yeah, read you, the it Zune. It would just work. Yeah. I had to, I had to load um, music onto a thumb drive. No. It was some weird thing where like... I think we had a hard drive. I think we had a big hard drive. We did have a big hard drive. But I can't... It was some... Like you couldn't... It was either you couldn't load music on a thumb drive and just rip it from there and you had to burn music on a CD <laughs> and it would rip it from the CD or if it was the other way around. But it was I, I think this is what we did. I think we ripped it from a CD onto one of those portable hard drives. No, I definitely the the music should be on like on our 360 hard drive. Okay. I plugged in my Zoom. I know you plugged in your Zoom. Great. But I was an iPod user like a normal person. So I had I had to find a workaround. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe this means we'll finally get Metal Gear Solid 4 at some point. Maybe. They would have to take out all the PlayStation 3 references. Mm -hmm. Or just put it on friggin' a PlayStation console. I think the hardest thing to port is going to be the whole pressing the button harder. I don't know, because I think you can, like change that to just holding the button for an extended period of time. Yeah, I guess so. Because, like, how often, like, do you have to do that? I forgot I forgot what it did. Yeah. But it, I remember it being significant. Yeah. Willow, thanks for the 28 months. He says, oh, man, forgot to cancel my sub. <laughs> <laughs> Got you for another month. Uh, all right, real quick. 343 scraps Halo, Halo something. Halo Infinite has scrapped its story-driven seasonal cutscenes. The, new, uh, the news comes after significant layoffs at 343 Industries earlier this year. In a tweet below, community director Brian Gerard explained 343 made the trade-off to make further gameplay improvements instead of a new story content for Halo Infinite. As we've refined our top priorities and shifted resources internally this year, uh, we had to make the decision to forego seasonal narrative cutscenes uh, to make room for the team to continue to focus on highly requested features, content, and improvements to Halo Infinite. The, these trade-offs are never easy to make, and we truly appreciate your support as the team works to make Halo Infinite the best experience possible. Uh, while the job is far from over, Season 4 marks another big step forward, and we remain committed to this journey in the Halo community. Uh, yeah, another another bad news more bad news for halo infinite another big l for halo yeah uh you know because like it's called halo infinite it's supposed to be like the forever halo game and like i'm getting the sense that like in a year or two they're just gonna cut their losses with this game it doesn't make any sense like like uh all no. it needed was a big robust multiplayer and they cut so many features from the multiplayer um Having Forge mode not at launch, yeah, really limited the infinite part. Yeah, of it. having like uh, the loot that you got in it, just what, like if if there was some cool shit 
that I could like be rewarded with for playing the game, I would have been uh, invested in playing the multiplayer. Yeah. But there was like barely any skins and uh, none of them were cool. And the only cool ones were like just prohibitively like like yeah. like out there like like the samurai like you needed a complete you needed to be like you know you needed to spend hundreds of hours to just get the little samurai outfit yeah. and it was that was it that was the only cool thing yeah um anyway next we'll talk about ubisoft says oh they didn't listen oh we should probably talk about this earlier yeah <laughs> uh yeah uh, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot uh, has said the publisher failed to heed Nintendo's advice by releasing Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope too soon. In an interview with GameIndustry.biz, Guillemot suggested that Nintendo advised the company that it would be beneficial to release the sequel on the Switch's successor. Ooh. 2017's Switch exclusive Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle had reached over 7.5 million players, according to Ubisoft Milan's um, creative director, David Solani. Um, but it. despite strong reviews and a five-year wait for the sequel, Sparks of Hope disappointed commercially following its release last October. Despite excellent ratings and player reception, as well as an ambitious marketing plan, we were surprised that Sparks of Hope underperformed in the final weeks of 2022 in early January, uh, Ubisoft said earlier this year. While Gilmo said that the market is suffering a little bit with the inflation situation, he told GameIndustry.biz the company should have been more patient with Sparks of Hope's release. I think it was a different. I think it was a different issue with Mario. He said we we had already released a Mario Rabbids game on Switch, so by doing another, we had two similar experiences on one machine. On Nintendo, games like this never die. Um, there are twenty. There are twenty five Mario games on Switch. Nintendo had advised that it's better to do one iteration on each machine. We were a bit too early. We should have waited for the next console. He added, because you could play a great game and we think it will last for 10 years because we will update it uh, for the new machine that will come in the future. Uh, while there are expectations such as, while there are exceptions such as Mario Galaxy games on the Wii, Nintendo doesn't generally release two entries in, the, in any one Mario series on the same console. So for example, it usually makes one uh, Mario Kart or three Mario game per system. In May, Nintendo reported a slowdown of Switch console sales, but suggested no hardware will be launched before April 2024. I think it's kind of insane uh, for Nintendo to be like, hey, Ubisoft, I think you should do this. And Ubisoft yeah. said, no, thanks. We're good. With their with a Mario game. Ubisoft yeah. is, is releasing a Mario game. Nintendo says, you should do this. And they go, we got it. That's ridiculous. That, you know, like part of me was like, you know, before you finished your sentence, I'm like, when you said it's ridiculous that, you know, Ubisoft didn't listen to Nintendo. Um, to me, it's not because Ubisoft is so up their own ass yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like game development because they, you know, they release the same game every year, be it Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, whatever they do with Tom Clancy, uh, Watch Dogs. Like they, they're so like shut off from what like, a game should be they just put out the ubisoft game not to mention like all like the the controversial stuff that happens within the studios they like put up blinders to it. it's like oh remain calm all as well uh, john know. got the juice in the chat says the ubisoft ceo seems to never listen to advice and then he also says i wonder how he will gaslight his employees into thinking it was their fault oh yeah <laughs> you know so that's why it doesn't surprise me that Ubisoft that they didn't listen to nintendo and wait to release the game yeah but you brought up a good point this is mario yeah this is their this is nintendo's like life they know what they're doing yes so like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's such a privilege that ubisoft is even able to make the game anyway i know and that's why the first one was such a big deal actually the first one was such a big deal because there was no mario game on the switch it was the first mario game on the switch go ahead i'm gonna go look, the I'm fuck gonna... ahead <laughs> it was right before odyssey came out and that's why it did so good that's the only reason it did good, because it's not a good game. <laughs> it was fucking Luigi's Mansion all over again. No, fuck you, Luigi's Mansion is a good game. <laughs> Mario Odyssey, October 27th, and Rabbids was August 29th. Yes. Okay. All right, so like a couple of months. That's <laughs> why it did so good, though. People wanted Mario on the Switch, and they had to have it this way. For like three months. 
Yeah. I, it wasn't I, like a that, year wait. That's the power of Mario. People people buy the new Nintendo console and they want Mario. All right. And they ha- and this is and that's the only way they were able to get it. So yeah, Nintendo is telling you next console, put it on there. Maybe it'll be the same sort of lightning in a bottle situation they had before. Right. And they're right, it would have. But they released this. They they pulled the Ubisoft to release the same fucking game again early. But you know what? I think they had to because they're hemorrhaging money. They yeah. probably couldn't afford to hold it. Yeah. Especially because who knows when Nintendo's coming out with their next thing. They might have a window where they want to release it, but they could delay it. Yeah. So uh, they'd be kind of at Nintendo's mercy for when they could make a return on the investment that yeah. they made with Spark of Hope. So, uh, but yeah, no, as Ubisoft doing another dumb, stupid thing with their, they're not going to last very long. <laughs> There's no you, way. You think they're going to... You think they're gonna uh, get purchased, or you think they're just gonna go out of business? I mean, these days, friend, people are gonna get people are gonna get purchased. Yeah. So I think the at very least the franchises will be sold off, but I yeah. don't think they're gonna make it much longer unless they do a huge turnaround, which is possible. The new uh, Assassin's Creed game looks pretty good. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, Prince of Persia looks good, but like they, Prince of Persia is not gonna like save the studio. They have uh, uh, Star Wars. They do have Star Wars. So Star oh, Wars I, could could Star save the Wars studio. could, but like. Star Wars is a big, expensive license, mm-hmm. so they probably paid a lot of money just for the license alone. You know, God knows how much money they're putting into development. I mean, I, I mean, this has to be a banger. The Star Wars game has to be a banger, and then they have to get more Star Wars games. Yeah, and it's possible that this one's a banger. They get more Star Wars games, and they run that into the ground. Yeah. So, so. all right, that's it. That's okay. all we got. But we got this. Twitter okay. Of the week. Twitter of the week. Twitter of the week. And we got Reggie's feet. There Happy you go. Father's Day. I hope you are chillaxing. I am. And it's just, it's just his fucking foot. <laughs> I like his, his uh, sandy ass foot. His comment is like, I expected more mother references than comments about my foot. <laughs> oh, because he gets a lot of mother yeah. references. What do you mean? It's a picture of your foot, dude. What did you expect? <laughs> I don't think Reggie fully understands the power of feet mm-hmm. on the internet. Uh, doesn't Danny DeVito do this? What, post pictures of his feet? I think he just, yeah, I think he posts pictures of his feet, like, all the time. I feel like Danny DeVito would understand the power of feet on the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not wrong. Here it is. Have a beautiful day. Troll foot love. This was April 9th. <laughs> he calls it the troll foot. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's disgusting. Oh, my God, his foot is disgusting. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right, we'll talk to you people right Yes. Now. Uh, let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Oh, these are some big ones this okay. week. We got Caleb Fox who says, in a communications class I took last semester, I had to mock up an interview with a classmate. I asked her questions from a list provided by my professor. And at the end, I asked her if there's anything else I should know. Out of all the important information she could have told me, she responded with, my favorite movie of all time is James Cameron's Avatar. <laughs> I think she is the reason why Avatar movies do insanely well at the box office. That's crazy. Yeah. All because of her. These movies make billions of dollars. I have to be honest. I was reading this and I had no idea where this was going to go. <laughs> and that was probably the last thing I would have guessed somebody yeah. would say. Look, like I've said before, like I genuinely think the first Avatar movie is a good movie. I think it was I, okay. I enjoyed the movie immensely in and out of 3D. I am shocked that an, a sequel to that movie did it. Not only did it as well as it did, but like people genuinely seem to like it. Like not just in the internet. I'm talking about in meat space. Like I've, I <laughs> physically talked to people who have said they enjoyed it a lot, which is crazy because it's a three and a half hour movie about blue space smurfs and whales. Yeah. So now, I can't believe that. Like I kind of want to see like this is that... That alone makes me want to see this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, how good could a sequel to Avatar be? Yeah. Like, I, I remember not liking Avatar. That I remember being like, that was all right. You know what it was? It was because it was so hyped up. Yeah. And I was just like, not impressed. I was watching, I watched with my wife, uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary series on Netflix. And the second episode is talking about his movie career. And like, they had James Cameron on too, to talk about like Terminator and True Lies and stuff. And I'm watching it and thinking like, you know, James Cameron really is a fucking great director. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. I don't care if he wants to make blue Smurf <laughs> movies for the rest of his life. Do you? You brought me 
T2, T1, T2, Aliens, True Lies. Great shit. Uh, Strix, S- S- Stir Sticks Burke says, Would games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk count as two discs because they have an installed disc? Yes. I say yes. Because it's, you, it's two discs. What do you mean count? It's two discs. Well, I didn't own Red Dead. You own Red Dead Redemption 2 physically, right? Yeah. That came on two discs? I remember games having an installed disc and a play disc. But that was back. That was that Red Dead Redemption the, 2. PS4. That was, that was 360. Yeah, but an installed disc and a play disc was 360 PS3 era. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a PS4 era game. Yeah, no, they had it on PS4. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I bought it. And Cyberpunk. I mean... Both of those games I bought digitally, so I can't... I'll fucking show you. All right. Uh, what games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk count as two discs uh, because they have an install disc. Will you get halfway through Final Fantasy VII Part Two and have to swap discs like the Dark Ages? That's the that's what I wanted to know when they announced that uh, FF7 two uh, FF7 Remake Part Two, whatever the fuck they're calling it, was going to be two discs because that implies that they kind of want you to switch discs. All right, let's see this. Well, that's Red Dead Redemption. Oh yeah, geez, data disc insert data disc first, and then play disc. And then Cyberpunk I have for Xbox One, uh-huh. and that is two discs and it's stacked. Oh my god! Like, so I also got more games just because I was curious. Um, Final Fantasy VII remake I remember was a million discs. Uh, this wait, is, actually no, it's two discs. It's just two discs. The remake, like the first, yeah, it's two discs. This is blowing my mind. But this, had... this, oh no, insert data disc first. Insert. Play this. Exactly. See, this is this is uh, what happens when you try to be more of a digital uh, game player. Like you don't you don't have any idea that this shit is still <laughs> happening in the year of our Lord, uh, 2023. God of War is one disc. Yeah, uh, not Ragnarok. This is the old God of War, and The Last of Us Part Two is. <laughs> It's two discs. No, no, bullshit. Because I played The Last of Us Part Two. I borrowed your copy, and I don't remember doing two. You, di- you did two that. discs, man. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh my god, I do not remember this at all. What one you put in just to install, and the other one's the play disc. But like, I don't understand. Like, because like I, I have, I do have some physical games, and they're all one disc. But a lot of those games are more than like fifty gigs. Because there's all this like extra crap that you have to download. Yeah. Like this just seems like a waste of plastic. Like you don't have to do this anymore. You just install the game, and like you download the rest of it, and it just uses the disc as an authenticator. Well, na- these days, uh, you can. Actually, I don't know. Like, like you, you, I don't, I don't know how it works anymore but these days you install the game and the ssd is so fast that it can pull things really quickly yeah. from the installation you just did uh i think they use the disk drive kind of in a similar way like that's the play disk part is you're playing off of the disk drive and you don't use the disk drive to play off of anymore i mean you technically didn't use the disk drive in this last gen either not much yeah. i mean you did for the Last of Us, because there okay. was a play disc. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Unless there's just fucking nothing on the play disc. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, am I, out, I guess I am out of touch. It is not the kids who are wrong. Uh, Gamer CF says, random thing on the hallway discussion. Oh. History student here. Hallways are a relatively new invention. Back in the day, like 1600s, hallways weren't a thing. No point having a room with no real purpose. Each room was important. You just put the rooms in an order where it doesn't matter if you have to walk through one into the other. Well, I'd imagine if you had like a big house, you'd want a hallway. I guess like hallways are like a more recent development and like for the common folk. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, like if you like, I've been to like historic homes. Yeah, and yeah, there's the, it, yeah, there's just one big room, and then like the bedrooms and the bathroom were like just connected. To or it. you walk into a dining room to get to the bed to, to the yeah. bedrooms. Yeah, yeah, but uh, 
I'd imagine these days you you have a hallway for like privacy. Like you walk yeah. into the hallway to get into the rooms, the bedrooms. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have to walk through somebody's room to get to the next yeah. room. Anyway, uh, Justin Pritch- Pritchard says uh, the Jalen name in the Star Wars trailer. I also thought it was already a name used for Star Wars. The one I was thinking of though was Galen Urso. Uh, the dad who helped build the Death Star in Rogue One. Yes, Mad Mickelson's character. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that now. Yes. Uh, Melon. Uh, I did the bird storm and volcano phenomenons. Oh, okay. In Zeldor and was kind of done. Uh, but to be fair, I spent dozens of hours just messing around and doing side quests. I kind of had my fill of the game before I thought, oh, I should do the actual story and finish this. After two phenomenon things, I had had too much of Zeldor's too. It'll be like Breath of the Wild for me where I did all the stuff and didn't revisit it till like two years later to finally finish it. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I kind of just want to go for the end just to get it over with, but uh, it'll probably take me a while to actually just go for the end. And Fred says, Will, how do you feel about the re- release of Mbop 2.0? You know, I've seen Hanson in concert, and I will say that uh, now wife that they're is a big Hanson, my fan, wife is, is like fucking hardcore Hanson fan. Her favorite bands, and this is true, are like Hanson and Motley Crue. That is a fact. She loves that's Motley weird. Crue. Uh, that's um, weird. But yeah, we I actually went with her once to see Hanson in concert, and you know what? They are much better musicians as adults. They are actually very good. And if you want to see a bunch of thirty-year-old white women lose their fucking mind, <laughs> you you go to a Hanson concert when they pull out Umbop. Um, that said, the 2.0 version that, like, I have heard it, uh, it is a little weird because it's, like, modern. And, like, when they do it in concert, like, nowadays, it's not, like, modern. Like, they still have the same, like, rhythm, the same, like, feel, the same aesthetic as it did in the past. They're just, their voices aren't cracking anymore. Right. Um, this one is, like, it's trying to be, like, a bit more modern. I don't think that necessarily works. Okay. That's where I am. That's, that's my Hanson talk for the day. Uh, all right, now we're in the chat room. Yes. Oh, Webby Pumpkin, thanks for the raid. Uh, do we get any other notifications? Uh, Holy Lettuce, thanks for the six months. Six months went by so fast. Thanks for the streams and can't wait for the TP stream. What's that? What's the TP stream? Toilet paper? Toilet paper? I will be playing along on my Vita. What the fuck? Oh, Twilight Princess. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to do that eventually. I still can't get the audio to work. It doesn't work on the retro tank either. Really? Yeah, I can't get the audio. Oh. Um, you might have to do it through the the Wii U then. It's that possible. Has yeah, I do have to do that. It's possible. It's an Elgato thing. Hmm. Um. Oh, we said hello to Willow already. You don't get a second one. <laughs> Mbop is my litmus litmus test for if they're old enough for me. I don't like that. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah, how, about, that... how about I just look at him? <laughs> uh, Zen- Zenoku, thank you for the prime. Keeping these primes pumping your way. Thanks, dude. Have people been checking of the next fest? Steam Next Fest. I have not. I also just heard of it today. That's like demos and shit, right? I think so. Like everyone's releasing demos and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been looking into it. Lies of P is part of it. Purchase? There you go. It's it. Oh, purchase pre purchase. I thought it said purchased. Steam's a uh, triannual event where hundreds of developers upload demo builds of their games uh, for you to try for free. Uh, one of the very few things in gaming that just feels unambiguously positive. I heard that uh, Lies of P runs great on the Steam Deck. Okay, there you go. But I did pre-download it or the demo on my uh, PlayStation. Okay. Babo, Li Retro this year probably. Uh, I haven't been asked to be a guest or anything, but I'll definitely be there at least one of the days. Yeah, like we will be there. Like, yeah. Whether or not we're asked, we'll show yeah. up. Uh, if we're asked, great. If not, then uh, you know we'll we'll just amass an army out front and just yeah. storm it. <laughs> Uh, too many games is this weekend, and I 
want to get a lot of Game Boys and stuff because I want to. I, I bought a bunch of uh, modding peripherals, okay. and I have plans for all different types of Game Boys and also an N sixty four controller because uh, I did the eight bit do mod. Yeah, uh, and it's really cool. Uh huh. They sent me a second one, but um. You take the whole innards out yeah. of the N64 controller. So I want to get a broken N64 controller and put the... Because I had perfectly good working innards yeah. that are just laying around. I want to put it in... Yeah, I want to yeah. fix a controller, basically. Makes sense. Yeah, I know uh, f- you can find like aftermarket N64 controllers. They look exactly the same. Yeah. You know, they just don't have the Nintendo branding on it. Yeah. So I just wanted, I, I saw those and they were mm. significantly cheaper and they probably work just as good. I just wanted to make sure I had an authentic one because I didn't know what would be different about right. it. Right. You know. Also, N64 shells. What do you mean? That's literally all you need is just the shell, the buttons, and the membranes. Um... I don't think they want you this year, bros. Long Island Retro, they already announced the guest list, unless it's just a, a part one and there's another part two. They they did announce the guest list. Maybe they maybe I didn't answer my emails. And we were not... I, I did see like the announcement. Somebody right? asked, and I was like, yeah, we'll be there. And then yeah. I... I don't know what happened. So... I mean, again, you will see us outside... You know, storm in the cradle of aviation. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there for sure. Yeah. Uh, are you going to stream the direct tomorrow? Uh, no. Uh, no, I, I'm not. Gonna, it's 10 a.m. I'm not fucking doing it. Okay. I might do like a YouTube short. I, th- if I thought anything. it was 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Oh, no. It's 7 a.m. on the West Coast. Oh, it's 10 a.m. on okay. the East Coast. Uh, I'll watch it. Live in bed, probably. Okay. Uh, and then if there's anything I'm really excited about, I will quickly make a YouTube short about it. But yeah. uh, I'm I'm not interested in, in streaming it. Uh, we I'll uh, we'll have a whole Nintendo podcast about mm-hmm. it going up on Thursday, I'm sure. Uh, Holy lettuce. Will have you ever seen Smallville? Uh, a couple of episodes here and there. I was never really into it. I never really liked it. I never liked the idea of doing. I don't. I don't like the way they handled uh, doing young Clark Kent. Uh, I don't like the idea of him and Lex Luthor being friends in high school. Um, yeah, yeah. And the fact that like it took him ten years to become Superman just like kind of was a not no thanks for me, bro. Um, also, no thanks for me. I saw the Flash. Oh, how not good. <laughs> Not good. Good. Very I don't bad. have to watch it. I don't yeah. No. It. Don't. It. It. Um. It's one of those movies where the more you think about it, the worse it gets. I. It's like figured it. W- I, I. I saw the trailer and I said there is no way this will be. It, any it's good. frustrating because there's like pockets of good of good ideas and good performances and good moments surrounded by a lot of junk mm-hmm. and a lot of things that just like fall apart the more you think about it. Especially the ending. The ending is genuinely bad. How different is it from the comic? Very. Okay. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of like similarities, like certain story beats. Um, it had to be different because it's not like a, most of the characters from the comic were never introduced in uh, the movie universe. So, and also the comic's not good either. <laughs> so I liked the comic, but the comic is better than this. I so. have a spoiler question I want to ask because okay. I don't. I'm not gonna fucking watch okay. it. Um, I would have watched it if it was good. Yeah. But I, I did. I, yeah. I mean, the preview said it was good, but that's been happening a lot. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't help when like James Gunn, who's now in charge of DC. James Gunn had nothing to do with this movie. Like yeah. he did not make this movie, did not write this movie, did not direct this movie. But he is now in charge of DC films, and he kept coming out and saying this is one of the best superhero movies I have ever seen. What movie did he see? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he saw a different version. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Bro. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and 
every and any uh, audio podcast service. But no matter where you get your podcast from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, I have a video up on Thursday. I'm going to too many games this weekend. Uh, I might do a cheeky little stream tomorrow just because I'm not going to be streaming for a while. Uh, and I didn't stream on Sunday because... Uh, it was Hannah's birthday, and you all made me feel bad for wanting to stream <laughs> that day. So I didn't. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't. I had a good time. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll try to stream tomorrow because I won't be able to at all this weekend otherwise. Uh, thanks for being here. Go watch AJ. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.